Hello everyone! Oggi vi propongo un'intervista che ragazzi io voglio fare da mesi e mesi. Stavo solo aspettando di trovare l'ospite perfetto e l'ho trovato. Come avete capito dal titolo, oggi parliamo della cultura italo-americana. Il mio ospite è una ragazza che è nata in America da genitori italiani, quindi c'è questo perfetto mix, questa perfetta unione della cultura italiana e americana. Comunque è americana, non vedo l'ora di iniziare. Ma prima due parole sullo sponsor di oggi. Notate mm, qualcosa qui? Lo sponsor di oggi è Ana Luisa, praticamente l'unica gioielleria online, ma anche non online, da cui compro prodotti ultimamente perché mi piacciono tantissimo. Hanno un design particolare e poi c'è tutta l'attenzione all'ambiente che per me è importantissimo. Oggi ne parliamo perché per San Valentino ci sono i saldi, quindi c'è un BOGO 40% sale. Buy one, get one, 40% off. Compri un pezzo e l'altro te lo danno scontato al 40%. San Valentino eh, non deve essere necessariamente, può esserlo ovviamente, il regalo per la fidanzata, ma può essere un regalo per se stessi, per un'amica. E quindi vi invito a vedere il loro sito, che lascio qui sotto, e ad usare il mio link personale che trovate in info box. Vi faccio vedere quello che ho preso io per questo mese. Iniziamo dal pezzo forte che è questa collanina che è carinissima perché ha l'apertura sul davanti e poi con il cuore rosso fa davvero tanto tanto San Valentino, no? Io qui vi metto tutti i prezzi prima dello sconto. Poi ho preso questo anello che io metto sul medio e che in realtà avevo adocchiato tanto tempo fa, particolare, quindi mi piaceva, lo volevo prendere, poi avevo preso altri pezzi, però questa volta mi sono decisa e l'ho preso e devo dire che non sono delusa, è bellissimo, ci sta bene anche tra l'altro con questo colore. Il materiale, questo verde che vedete, è malachite, quindi è anche particolare, ha tante proprietà, se vi piacciono le proprietà dei minerali, insomma. L'ultimo pezzo per oggi che ho preso è questo bracciale, che è molto bello nella sua situazione. Ha ah, questa maglia particolare Secondo me quando una cosa riesce ad essere Semplice ma particolare È la cosa migliore davvero perché risulta Salta all'occhio però è elegante E tra l'altro penso che questo bracciale con questo anello Si abbinino benissimo se dovete prendere due pezzi Ana Luisa è molto attenta all'ambiente Emissioni zero Usa materiali riciclati È attenta al packaging Evita gli sprechi Andate sul sito e potete trovare tutta la filosofia Dietro i loro prodotti Il link è in info box Passiamo al video di oggi Allora io prima ho solamente accennato al fatto che ho trovato finalmente l'ospite perfetto il mio ospite, in realtà è una ragazza è americana ma ha genitori italiani, lei è super attiva sui social quindi la potete trovare su youtube, sul suo youtube personale, su hardcore italians dove parlano proprio della cultura italo-americana, su twitch su instagram, direttamente dall'america abbiamo oggi come ospite Giuliana Calascibetta Ciao a tutti! I'm Giuliana and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Like I've been wanting to have this interview for the longest time and finally I found you. I was so happy. I know, I'm so happy too. I like feel like I already know you too, which is so weird. You are super active on social media, like you're on YouTube, two channels, Instagram, Twitch, but for the people who don't know you, tell me more about your background, your origins, like who are you? Who am I? I'm Juliana, and very important that you know my name starts with a G. It doesn't start with a J. I live in America, I live in New York, upstate New York, Rochester. People always want to spell with a J, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm Italian. I spell with a G and they think it's the weirdest thing ever. So right off the bat, you know that I'm an Italian girl. My middle name, Giuliana Cristina Calascibetta. So Cristina without an H, I know. And people are like, how do you spell that? No one can pronounce, no one can spell. It's insane. I'm 100% Italian. My mother is full-blooded Italian-Italian. And this matters in America, by the way. My father is 100% Sicilian. And he likes to remind us that we're Sicilian. Yes, this is a thing. Wait, but your mom's from Naples, right? My mother's from Napoli, yes. Sicilia e Napoli. Poor mom. <laughs> So my father, our family's from Riesi and my mom's from Napoli, but they are, uh, I'm second gen. So they weren't born there. So my grandparents came here from Italy and Sicily and my parents were basically conceived in Italy and Sicily and then they come here and they're born. However, I cannot speak the language. My parents both speak it, but they speak a dialect. My father speaks Sicilian dialect. My mother speaks, you know, just like pure Italian, like very like classic. And then growing up, I'm trying to learn. They teach us words, like one of our first words, whatever. And I go to preschool and you say like mi scappo la pipì and they don't understand what yeah. you're saying. No. <laughs> you were like mi scappo la pipì and they were like oh sorry 
what? What? And I don't, you know, at that age, you don't understand that people don't know, like, yeah. Italian. Because you're young. And so my parents, you know, they started teaching us more Italian. And I only know a few words. I can understand. Like, I watch your stories. You speak so quickly, though. So it's hard for me to understand the Italian. You know, I, I know it's phonetic. I can sound it out. I, if I see the words, I could do it. I feel like if you dropped me off in Italy, I would be okay. For sure. Okay, for sure. Yeah. I'm the youngest of four children. So I have my oldest brother, Antonio Amadeo. And then my sister, Bianca. Bianca Rosa. So it rose and then my brother Carmelo Marco and then there's me Juliana Cristina my father when he was 19 years old He started a pizzeria in Geneva, New York He did it with his brother and they just created so many all over New York State and now it's the family business You know, I basically I, I like to joke that I came out of the womb with a pizza cutter I bleed like <laughs> pizza sauce like pizza's my life. I've been doing it forever I call it the circle of za in America. We say pizza is za like it's just a fun za. za yeah, I have a slice of za I love it. <laughs> and I saw that you like thin pizza. Oh yeah, so this is a problem too. So we are Italians, but we make New York style pizza. It's thin crust pizza. People are like, is this this is not Italian pizza if I'm screaming on Twitch or people are watching, I go, it's pizza, New York style pizza made by an Italian. So it's still good. I like American pizza. So not all American pizza, but if the ingredients are good and they know how to cook the dough, like it's good. Yeah, so that's all we know. That's all we know growing up. And now I'm the district manager of five locations, soon to be six, we're opening a new one. And I basically train people to become managers and own their own stores and franchise them out and it's me and my brother Carmelo he bought the business from my father he wasn't given it bought the business from my father a couple years ago and now we're so close and we do the business together and you know that's what I do full-time I love pizza it's so fun it's an art I call it the art of za it's just so fun it brings people together and it makes me feel like I'm you know it's my roots so the second question was do you speak Italian but you answered already so yeah third question I know Italian Americans use some specific words differently compared to other Americans like can you teach us some Italian American English okay so let me preface preface this by saying I don't use these words I just know they exist for us in my family we're super old school like so old okay. school to the point where like I can't move out until I'm married type of old school like so by the book yes so that is not normal especially in 2022 but you know this is how it is this is normal in Italy but it's not because I think it's not because like you cannot move out it's just that it's convenient that too. You, you know, know, like, <laughs> why would I have to pay for the rent and do my own laundry if mom can If ma can work? cook, if ma can, yes, of course. And mom wants to be a mom anyway, so she enjoys it. As far as those words, I know there's like gabagool, there's like all these like capocol, like it's like ragat. For us, I don't say this. I don't say this. I think it just sounds like, uh, it doesn't sound classy. You just, you say ricotta. You don't say ragat. Ragat. Ragatta is ricotta. Yeah, they say ragat. Ragat. Honestly, if I say it, it looks like I don't know my culture. It just looks de degrading to the words, to the language. I won't say that. But I know they have like these words like that. Brajut, like prosciutto, they would say like braja. Like they just don't finish it. And it's like braja. Yeah. I'm sure this comes from a dialect, from some southern dialect, but I don't know. Braja. I say prosciutto. This is right. This is what I say. I understand what you mean. It doesn't sound authentic and because your family is 100% Italian, you don't want to use these words that don't sound Italian. It's all based on how you were raised, what your parents think is important to teach the kids, in my opinion. This is cool. This is interesting. <laughs> Alright, next question is... You need to know that I'm not normal. <laughs> you need to know I'm not normal. This is not normal for Italian-American. I'm telling you. Well, living with your parents until you're like 30 is normal in Italy. Not everybody does it, like some people move out, but people won't be surprised like, oh my god, are you still with your parents? It's like normal, convenient. In America, that's not normal. If you're 18, you move out and like if you're still in there, you're weird. If you move out when you're 18, it's either because you want to go study somewhere and it's like, you know, far from your city. But if you're like staying in the same city and you want to move out, I guess that's a little more rare. Next question is, I always see proud Italian Americans on TV, but are you proud of being Italian? I am very proud of being Italian. Sometimes I'm more proud to be Italian than American, if I'm being honest. Like I feel so blessed that I was born into an Italian family. But then I, I meet so many um, people online 
mine or just friends here who are from like just that area, the Mediterranean blood. And I feel like we all share similar values. So like I'll meet like hardcore Greek friends, you know what I mean? And they share similar values as me. And yeah. I cling to that because in American culture, it's all like one for all. It's all very individualistic. And I was brought up to be, it's all family oriented. So I'm meeting these people. It's truthfully, even at this age, it's really hard to make true authentic friends because they don't understand the value of family or the value of visiting my house and making sure you hug or kiss my mom my father or bringing over flowers bringing over something to eat like that is not normal in america and you know if i do it to like a friend's house just like a girlfriend i come over i bring something i made it's just not to show off it's just who i am they think it's nice but they think it's fake and it sounds something so stupid but if it really matters to you and you really believe to be the person who brings in you know something you baked or just flowers for the mother for the grandmother it's not yeah. normal and it makes me sad it truthfully makes me sad what's the point of life like i want it to mean something i want to be with people who understand that life is about more than just me 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 like it should be about us you know strength in numbers yeah. that's very italian <laughs> next have you ever been to italy I've never been to Europe. There were so many times we were supposed to go and there were school trips we could have gone. There were so many opportunities, but this is how old school we are. My father says, we don't go unless we go as a family. And my, f yeah, yeah. There's a million of you. Like you have now that we're three old. siblings. Yes. yes my father has gone he's gone with my ma like they go together but as a family we've never all gone and my nonna she's like i want to go to italy and bring one of you guys and it's always my other cousins because we haven't gone as a family yet and they really want that to happen and i have a feeling this year we might go if you come to rome we have to make a video in person and i can show you around if i go to italy for the first time you know i have to go to rome i don't mean to like deter the interview but i hear that romans are like the like toughest ones <laughs> is that true oh the tough ones i feel like romans are usually angry yes because, yeah but it's not because we're like we're very friendly i like romans but we live in a city that was built thousands of years ago so the streets are narrow there are like almost four million people in rome yeah a lot of cars not a lot of parking spots you know the the metro system is terrible so of course we're angry because we spend like three hours a day stuck in traffic yeah if you see a roman on their day off they're super friendly i love I love how that was the reason why they could be angry is the narrow streets. We that's the last thing I thought of. Stressed out. You take a Roman, send them to Bali. I'm sure they're happy. <laughs> Do you ever think about moving? moving for good to Italy. For me, I'm not like I'll always be in New York. It's just like my family's here. That's what matters the most. But who knows, someday maybe we buy a house there and it's a vacation home and we stay there. Right. If I'm being truthful, I don't, you know, I love America. I'm so blessed to be here and the freedom and everything that we have. I am so blessed. I am grateful to be here. I don't mean to put Americans down. However, in the last couple of years or just this time in America, it seems so broken and so like, I'm not on TikTok and like seeing what kids are posting, seeing what people are doing and they think it's okay. It's just, I'm scared to bring kids up. And my goal is to be a mother and have a lot of children. I am scared to bring these children to America, like to have them here. And you think like there's freedom, of course, but in the end, there's so many terrible things. There's terrible things everywhere, but it's like, it's bad. I, it is really bad. Like just the way that people are, what they think is right now. And I don't know how different it is in Italy. I know times have changed as well. I just want to raise my children in somewhere safe and good and I don't know. No. Sometimes it gets You would have to come here first and test it out and really get to know because I mean I we say Italy but Italy is not a big country but there are a lot of differences between you know northern Italy, southern yes. Italy. You would have to see if you like it better. But I understand what you mean. Come get stressed here. <laughs> I need to nice. learn the language. So time to move on to my followers' questions. Do you ever sense or have you ever sensed some racism because of your Italian origins? Have you ever been bullied? In so many ways, yes. Well, first off, you know the show Jersey Shore, I'm sure. Yes. So I grew up in middle school with that and people thought it was cool. The Americans thought it was cool. So they would go around. They knew I was full blood Italian and they would call me Guidette. And I did not like that. I thought that was... Terrible. I hated it because the show does not represent Italians in a good way, in my opinion. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, the show was like, you know, let's go party and drink. When they went to Italy, it was obvious that they didn't know the culture. The culture. So that's one thing. Second thing, you see my nose. I putting myself online. Everyone always says, get a nose job. Your nose is too big. What is this bump? What's up with this nose? Like so many people. When I was, you know, younger, this would bother me. You know, I never 
never thought about my nose this way. I never thought there was a problem with it. I thought it was beautiful. It's actually something I inherited from my nonno, my father's father, and he had the same nose. And I was thought that was so cool. Like the patriarch, I have his nose. What does that mean? <laughs> but people are doing that, and I'm just like, this is a very, I feel like a very Italian feature of me. And I guess you could look at that in a way of being kind of racist. People say, oh, you're Jewish. They think I'm Jewish because of my you're nose. Pretty, you have a beautiful face. Your nose is part of your face. Like it gives you personality. As far as other things go, I mean, this is kind of specific, but I did dance growing up. You know, us Italians, we're very hairy. When I was like 11, 12, I had hair on my legs and no other girl had that and my mom wouldn't let me shave She's like you're too young and girls used to like touch my legs and dance and be like you need to shave and I was like what? You know, I'm gonna shave someday, but I'm young and mm -hmm. they made me feel so bad about being hairy This was a thing as well growing yeah, up. I had the same struggle. Our hair is like the same color really dark This is my natural color. So it's not that, that I'm like super hairy but compared to other italians who maybe you know they're blonde or brunette their hair is not as dark i would feel uncomfortable sometimes but maybe in america where everybody's like blonde. you know you're the only one at yes. least i had friends who were just like me so we were like yeah yeah no in That's america true. very rare next are you in touch with your Italian family? Yes and no. So I have two cousins. I have Lucia and Cecilia. They live in um, Sicily. And I'll talk to them over Instagram. Like we'll DM each other. They came to visit, I think like four years ago. It was like learning the culture just through them. They used to live here and they yeah. moved to Italy very young. And they were just like in America, you eat a lot, so you become fat, so I have to work out. So they would work out every hour. They were so scared about being fat in America. Like they were young, they were like high school kids. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I keep in touch with them. I haven't seen them in a while, but they want to come visit again. So I'd say yes. Yes, you definitely know them. You've met some oh, of yes. them. Yeah. Next, what do you think about Italian American? Food. I truly dislike Olive Garden. Per chi non lo conosce, Olive Garden è una catena di ristoranti molto famosa in America che propone cucina italiana. It's just not good. It's not good if a guy asks you out and says you're Italian, I'll take you to Olive Garden. Do not go. Bad. Terrible food. Tastes like feet. <laughs> I've been once. It wasn't terrible, but also I'm not a picky eater. It's okay, as long as it's not terrible. Really? See, I, okay, breadsticks were good. The breadsticks there are untouchable. They're great. But the, as far as like the cheese, and uh, it just was not good. I can't eat it. Just a regular, just like sauce. It does not even, right from the jar or the can, whatever they use. I don't like I it. I don't remember what I had. I think I had something like minestrone, but then it wasn't minestrone. Anyways, okay, no Olive Garden. What about like people who cut their spaghetti? Terrible. So frowned <laughs> upon. Or putting cheese on like a seafood dish, like sepia sauce. You don't do this. The first time, me and my sister joke about this. We went to a friend's house and they were making pasta. I'm like, oh, okay, great. Pasta. We're used to like my mother's sauce. They're, they're very American. And they whip out a jar of prego sauce. And it was the first time I was like, people use this? They use this ketchup? And then meanwhile, we have like, you know, my mother makes a sauce every Sunday. It's always in the fridge. So I just, yeah. you don't understand. Especially, I feel like I live in a bubble as, you know, being Italian like that. I'm sure my followers will be happy. Because <laughs> I'm glad, amici. Okay, next question is difficult. Do you feel more Italian or more American? I think it's very situational. Sometimes I feel more American. When I can't speak the language, it makes me feel very American. It makes me sad. I wish I could speak it. When I feel more Italian, it's like my friends want to go on a trip and I just know I can't go. And I feel more Italian based on my family, the way they do things. Also, I'll go to friends' houses and they always make me. I'm always the one who's cooking. They're always like, Juliana, you cook. You make the food. Because no one can cook. I'd hate that. No, I, act I love it, honestly. <laughs> it kind of makes me feel cool. And you know, people all over here, you're, it's like so normal. Oh, it's for lunch today, I'm gonna get Chinese food. For lunch today, I'm gonna order, you know, sushi, anything. What, well, how often? Every day. Yeah, people eat takeout food all the time. It is so rare that people know how to cook. Especially young adult 20s do not know how to cook. And half the time, the parents don't know how to really cook either. <laughs> you know, maybe when you're 20, you can eat takeout food and get away with it. But when you're 40 or 50, if you've never learned, then what are you gonna do? Exactly. That's okay. something what makes me feel more Italian because I know all 
Italian dishes. You know, I learned from my grandmother and my mom. It is really like a mixture. You are Italian and you are American. Yes. So it's I'm telling you, like, this is not normal. It's very interesting. I don't know anybody else like me. And sometimes I feel more connected to someone like you. You lived in the culture. I've never been there, but I feel connected to you because I kind of feel like you understand where I'm coming from. My values or what my family values. And here, not so much, but then it could flip-flop. Yeah. Okay, I have one more question for you and then I'll let you go. What are some things you don't really like about the Italian and the American culture? This is gonna get real personal. I told you, you know I have a Sicilian father and my brothers are so, so masculine. So masculine. Like what they say goes. It's like you're the woman. It's kind of sexist when you think about it. In 2022 especially, you know, the man is the head, the woman is the neck. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> this is something about, I think, Italian culture that I like, but I don't like because I grew up in so much masculine energy and I still want a man like this but not as extreme and that's something I really disliked about Italian culture because I'm growing up and I can't go out to see my friends at a certain time because I'm a woman and then my brothers can do whatever they want because they're boys they can do this and that's something that bothered me I understand but especially in America in America in 2022 this is so hard to explain to people and I was raised this way and I understand where my parents are coming from but it's tough it is tough I think things are different in southern Italy. I, I don't even know because I'm not from Sicily, but from what I've heard or maybe friends, this is more normal in Sicily or southern Italy, but like Rome is southern Italy, but it's a big city. So usually we don't hear that anymore. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. It does. It's still, you know, sometimes people are can be sexist, but it's changing a lot. And especially in like, you know, Rome to northern Italy, I don't think that's the, the reality now. That's so interesting. I'm also thinking like maybe because you know your grandparents moved to America and they had the Italian culture from Sicily from like you know years and years ago and then your parents grew up with them in a sort of bubble because they had the Italian culture but in America so it didn't really develop with the rest of Italy. That's such a great way to think about it. I've never thought about it like that. What was the American culture? What I dislike about American culture? Yes. I kind of answered that in the beginning of this. Right, right. They're just super individualistic, all about me. They don't really see the value in family. Like they'd rather be with friends on a holiday than with their family. And I think that's so sad. Except Thanksgiving. Yeah, they go and then they go shopping for Black Friday immediately after. Meanwhile, we're the eating connection. like our fifth course and watching the Godfather part two. Like yeah. literally, this is us. Juliana, thank you so much for being here. Guys, her links are here below. Links to her YouTube channel, Instagram. <laughs> She's so active. Oh, so. thank you. So are you. Oh my gosh, your stuff. I'm learning so much just from your stuff. I'm so glad we connected. Thank you so much. Go follow her. Follow me. Yes, follow her. Follow Sonia. Bye. Bye.